I think one of the major goals or dreams of all indie game developers is to release their game on Steam. I'm not really sure why this is, but I guess it's just because it's just the most well-known PC game launcher. Whatever it is, I figured it was finally time to put my game on Steam. If you're new here, I'm ZippyZack, and I'm making a multiplayer first-person action shooter game with a variety of different game modes. Now before I could actually start putting my game on Steam, I needed to decide on an actual name for what I've been calling Zippy Multiplayer Game. So without further ado, the new name is X Mode. I think it sounded a lot cooler before I said it like that. There's a little bit of reasoning behind the name. X Mode is going to feature a variety of different game modes, hence the X representing whatever game mode. Of course, I'm also known for liking X's in my names, as seen by my username, X, Zack X. And lastly, I think X mode just sounds catchy and cool, which is an important thing to have in a name. Alright, now that I had a name, I could start the Steam process. Step 1. Give Steam your lunch money. Your money or your life. It's $100 per game you want to put on Steam, so I started off by paying that. And in return, I get my very own Steam app ID. Step 2. Fill out all your game information, descriptions, images, recommended specs, etc. And just like that, we have a Steam store page. Yup, you guessed it. It's time for the plug. Wishlist X Mode now. Links at the top of the description. X Mode will be free to play when it's released, so there's really no hurt. I would greatly appreciate your wishlist so you're reminded of its release, because I think it's probably still going to be a while until it's ready. Step 3. Now this one was the most difficult step, and it was more difficult for my game, mainly because my game already has a user account system that I needed to get working alongside Steam's account system. If you didn't know, I'm using Firebase for my backend systems. Firebase handles the user accounts and any data storage that I need using the Firebase database. I also use Firebase functions for certain things as well. I'm using Steamworks.net for the integration of Steam and Unity, so I spent a while learning how that all works. This basically tells the Steam launcher that my game is meant to be launched through Steam and allows me to use the Steam features such as accounts, achievements, friends list, and much more. After a bunch of work, I got Firebase to authenticate user accounts using Steam and everything was working great. And now when you launch the game, you will automatically be logged in with your Steam account. Step 4. The last thing I needed to do was just upload the build of my game. And just like that, X mode is on Steam. It's definitely very cool to have a game on Steam, but it's also scary in a way because it feels a lot more real now. Which I hope is a good thing. I think it's definitely adding to my motivation to get X mode to a releasable state, but I definitely think it's still going to be a while until that is, and it's going to be a lot more work, but it definitely still feels achievable. I've started implementing a player leveling system. When playing on an official server, you will gain XP from getting kills, assists, or winning games. This XP value is then saved to a Firebase database under your user's data. Then using this XP value, I calculate a player's level based on a simple function. If we graph this function in Desmos, we can see that the amount of XP required for each level increases exponentially, which basically means the XP required to get to the next level will always continue to increase. By adjusting the A and B constants in this function, we can change how drastic the exponential growth is. Now that I had the XP and level data, I needed to display it. The player's current level is shown in the main menu above the player character, along with a bar that shows the XP progress towards the next level. This is also shown when a game ends, an animation is played as the XP increases, and if you reach the next level. While playing, you can see each player's level in the scoreboard. Oh, and I added their Steam icon to the scoreboard as well. I also created an X mode leaderboard webpage where you can see all the players ranked by their XP. These are all the players who joined the first Steam playtest of X mode. So, by the way, if you want to be part of playtests, make sure to join the Discord server and keep an eye out for the next Steam playtest. And that's it for the player leveling system as of now. It's fairly simple, but it works. I'm sure I'll have to tweak it as more people play the game, but for now, it seems to be working well. Over the past year, the main shooter game I've been playing is Battlefield 2042. 
and one of the mechanics I really like from the game is the quick attachment swapping system it has. So I went ahead and added a very similar weapon attachment system to X mode. While holding a gun item, by using the default key G, an attachment menu opens in world space. You can then quickly swap what attachments your gun is using. Being able to do this while playing makes it so you can always adapt your weapon to best suit your current situation. Similar to the loadout radio menu, this attachment UI is also dynamically generated depending on the attachments a gun item supports. This will make it easy to add more attachments to gun items in the future since I'll just have to tweak some values in the inspector. Speaking of attachments, right now there is just a few sights and a flashlight for testing purposes. But eventually, when I start focusing on adding content, there will be many more attachments added. In the end, I'm really happy with how this attachment system turned out. It's simple, but it works great. Previously, I was using the Unity Terrain Engine for the Valley Map, but now I've switched to using the Polaris Train Engine. Train Engine. Terrain Engine. Now the terrain is able to be shaded flat which I think matches X mode's low poly style much better. In the infected game mode, when infected are killed, they now have a chance to drop a frag grenade for the survivors to use. Guns now sway slightly when aiming down sights. Gun muzzle flashes now emit light. Throwables have a trail when thrown. Flash and frag grenades now also emit light when exploding. The camera now floats to an overview of the map while showcasing the scoreboard at the end of the game. And lastly, I added my Discord server link to the main menu, which is also in the video description so make sure to join. That's it for this update video, click on the playlist at the end card to watch all my other update videos. I hope you liked this update video and I hope to see you in my next one. Until then, thanks for watching, Zippy out.